Of course, the MD of Inside Sources, US political commentator Michael Graham. Um, how are you doing, Michael? Look, I'm doing great. I just wish I could be in the jury room to watch them all sit quietly and look furtively at each other before someone goes, so does anyone know what he's supposed to do that was illegal? <laughs> because that's, that's the question we have in the States. What was the actual crime? And of course, the prosecutors waited until after the defense rested to say, okay, okay, okay. The double secret crime that makes these other mini crimes, crimes that we can prosecute, is election fraud. He was screwing with the election yeah. because he didn't want anyone to know about his alleged girlfriend. The problem is the payments that are the little crimes didn't happen until after the election. Yeah. So it involved the DeLorean going 88 miles an hour, carrying the records back through time before the election. <laughs> I knew Michael J. Fox would be in this somewhere. <laughs> So this is the, I mean, this is the nonsense of this. So there might, I mean, is there some wrongdoing? There probably is some wrongdoing. Is there illegality? And they're two different things, right? Well, I look, having an affair, you know, that's not cool. Uh, paying hush money is not illegal, but it's kind of gross. You know, there's a lot of things to say and do about this case that people yeah. won't like. But the question is, if this guy were Ronald Bump the guy who runs a chain of delicatessens across Manhattan, would he be sitting in this courtroom? And the answer is no. This is as uh, uh, attorney George Conway, whose wife, Kellyanne Conway, was Trump's campaign manager, and he's a you know hardcore anti-Trumper, said in an interview this week, let's just get him for something, I don't care what. Yeah. And, and that's what, the, this is the I don't care what trial. How, but how does that divide, do you sense, Michael, across American opinion? Because there's an obvious political divide. Democrats think he should be executed, sent to the chair. Uh, Republicans will be under, not all, but most will be a little more understanding. There are some others on each side. I've heard Democrats sure. say, look, there's a lot we could throw at this guy, but this ain't one of them. Right. So the issue for Trump is that the country is a 50-50 country. 2016, if you had changed fewer than 50,000 votes in you know, the right three states, Hillary would have won that election. In 2020, I think it's 80,000 votes over three states, You know, Trump would have won. And so with margins that narrow, if it's the case that a headline that says, convicted felon Donald Trump, you know, whatever, mm. you know, gets his due, that ad alone could sway 100,000 people who just say, I, I can't vote for a convicted felon. They won't know yeah. what the law was, whatever. And so that's the danger for Trump is the margins are so narrow. How are they doing in terms of polling right now? What is, if there were an election tomorrow, who would win? Trump would win tomorrow. We, we uh, Inside Sources owns New Hampshire Journal, which covers the first in the nation primary states. A small state it was a state that seven of the last eight presidential elections went Trump. Our poll, excuse me, Trump, seven, eight went Democrat. Trump has only run, what, 17 yeah. times? Um, it seems like, I feel like Trump's been running for president my entire it's, life. He's been anyway, there forever, right? A, a state that is seven out of eight Democrat. The poll, we have polling in the last week where he is tied with Joe Biden. That should not be happening. And it's the kind of suburban blue state that like Virginia or Minnesota, you just don't even think that Trump would have a chance to win there. And yet, He's within the margins in all three of those states. Yeah. And so what's happening right now is Trump's map continues to expand, whereas President Biden's map is contracting key states like North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona. You could argue that they're not even competitive anymore, that they're, they're going to be Republican. And so uh, Biden's map is getting smaller. Trump's map is getting bigger. You want to be Donald Trump? Well, we got an election over here, of course, which I don't think was called yes. last time we spoke, Michael, uh, but it, it, it kind of crept up on us. Rishi Sunak suddenly said he went out in the pouring rain and without an umbrella and announced July the 4th there'll be right. an election. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Nigel Farage. He's a British Oh, politician. absolutely. I've interviewed him several times. Oh, there you go. So you're, you're, you're familiar with Mr. Farage's work. And, of course, he's a friend of Mr. Trump. Uh, there is some suggestion that if Trump gets in, he will offer Nigel a, a bit of a, a, a job of some kind. We don't know. Nigel's not going to stand for a political party in this country at this right. election. He said he wants to put his efforts into helping Trump. He appeared with us earlier on Talk. And let's have a little listen to what he said about the Donald. My number one, my number one priority is this country. However, 
the number one priority for the world is that Trump gets back. We've got big bully boy dictators threatening world peace in a way we've not seen for over 60 years. And bullies only respect strength. Mm. Trump radiates strength, Biden the opposite. And I believe the world was a safer place when well, the it definitely was. was in the White House. There it is, a safer place. Would you concur with that, Michael? Well, look, you can't argue with the math. You know, Russia wasn't invading, you know, Ukraine. It was just, it was stuck in Crimea. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Afghanistan wasn't the hellhole that it is. And, you know, China wasn't threatening Taiwan the way it is. And of course you have the Israel uh, Hamas mess and on and on and on. So you can't argue with that. I just think it's fascinating that you chose July 4th to be, <laughs> and here in America, we love that because of course. Who, uh, apparently uh, Sunak wants fireworks for his funeral because <laughs> it is going to be a wipeout for the Tories yeah. and it is going to be the 4th of July in America. I don't know how the two overlap. I mean, there must have been you know. a meeting. Um, it is my Auntie Maureen's birthday that day as well. So oh, may, may, maybe they, they thought about that. Somebody in the meeting would have gone, well, you know, you know what July 4th is? And, they, <laughs> and then somebody else would have said, well, yeah, that's true, but it's not in this country. But, really? you know, but nonetheless, I mean, I would say the t July, the f July 4th, December the 25th, October the 31st. Right. There are certain dates that resonate. You don't always remember well, what order they're in or who, who celebrates what. But, but it's, e but it's, it's even a thing. worse because... What is July 4th? It's essentially a celebration of Britain's first great defeat in its era of empire. Listen, there was so nothing wrong with that, that T. We got our butts kicked day <laughs> is a really good day for anyone to call an election. That's just, yeah. that's just me, Michael Graham. And send all your hate mail to Mike Graham. At yeah, talk. It, yes, it, yes. Send it all to him. Not Michael absolutely. Graham, to Mike Graham. He, Mike he can Graham handle that. He said it. He said absolutely right. But I think <laughs> you're, you're spot on about this, though, Michael, as you often are on these things. Um, is the excitement building? Is it, of course, people forget in the United States, there are other people that stand for president. We hear about sure. the two big ones, but there are other characters. Is there anybody on the sidelines that could come up from the, like the, the great horse race when they come from behind four furlongs back and suddenly, before you know it, they're up there. So what's interesting is you have a third, you know, an independent candidate, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He comes from a, you know, legacy family, yeah. obviously. He's a huge name ID. His wife is a Hollywood celebrity. But he's self-limiting because his ideological stances are, you know, outside the mainstream, whether it's on the issue of vaccinations and personal health or whether sure. it's on the issues of conspiracies, or whatever. And so he's kind of self-limiting. And what's interesting to me about that is this is the kind of year where if, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson called Condoleezza Rice, our former national security advisor, and said, let's run for president together as a third party, they would probably win like you know, going away because Trump and Biden, I cannot express it, so unpopular. They are so unpopular. But Robert F. Kennedy Jr. kind of blocks an independent lane while yeah. not really showing a path forward for himself because both parties are uncomfortable with some of his a more uh, ed edgy stances. Yeah, and, and even if people agree with that, across the states, it doesn't translate as, you know, yeah, I right. think he's good. I think he's a good talker. You know, I know he's got the voice thing going on, right. which he talks about a lot, but that somehow enamors him to some people. I say that not, 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 yeah, not as a, a criticism of, 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 of of that, but as a, as, as a, almost a standout trait of that. Right. And of course, he's got the name. Uh, but I think people do put that but in there. But, you know, he's got some kind of unusual ideas about other things. And as you say, that's enough to probably preclude him from a lot. But nonetheless, you stand by what you said, Michael. If there were an election tomorrow, despite the shortcomings of both current candidates, main candidates, Trump would win. He's winning in six of the seven swing states that are almost certain to pick the next president, and he's tied in the seventh. So right now, yes. Now, there's going to be a half a billion dollars nuking him on the issue of abortion and on the issue of the January 6th riots, and that's definitely going to have an impact, particularly in the states that have more of those suburban college voters like a New Hampshire, like a Virginia. But I don't think that those attacks are going to have much impact in states where the, it's the working class voter mm. who's abandoned the Democratic Party. And it's been over time. It kind of started under Obama and then, and then followed along. 
And states like Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, a lot of people who work with their hands, a lot of you know women who have jobs in sure. the service industries, they're not going to be talking about January 6th riots and the threat to democracy. They're going to be talking, hey, stuff is literally 20 percent more expensive than when Joe Biden got elected. And that's for a lot of voters, that'll be yeah. enough. And right now, it's certainly enough. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some um, interesting echoes of what is happening on this election on this side of the pond in that in that respect, too. Listen, Michael, thank you.